Okay, so we're going to give you a quick tour of the programming window and then we'll get started. Over here on our left, we have our input and background tabs, which show all of our inputs and all of our backgrounds. Then we have our programming windows over here in the center, program and preview. So over here on the right, we have our contextual adjust tab, our layers tab, our destination groups, our user keys, and our preset tab. Down below here on the right hand side, we have the destination transition window. And then here in the center bottom, we have the layer modification buttons. We're not going to go into too much detail on these buttons now. We just want to let you know that they're there. All right, so let's get started. We're going to drag over a live background into our widescreen destination. And then we're going to drag an input over, which grabs the first available source and drop it onto our destination. This automatically gets assigned to the first available pip layer. So we'll do this a couple of times and we'll move on to our auxes. I'm going to grab a couple of sources and drag them right into our auxes. Now we'll arm the destinations and prepare them for transition. We'll simply hit all trans which will take them to program. And that's simple programming. We're going to move on to user keys. For this, we're going to focus on our widescreen destination. A user key enables you to select any or all of the selected layer's attributes and store them. These attributes can then be applied to any layer. So we're going to keep it simple today. We're going to create several position user keys as well as a couple of size user keys. First, let's concentrate on the position user keys. I'll create those by deselecting everything except for the position attribute. So I'll simply click Save to New User Key and rename it. I'm going to call this one Center. Then I'm going to create a user key observing the position for the left. And I'm going to do the same for the right hand side. So here I have center, left, and right. Conversely, I can select them and hit Apply Selected. Okay, now we want to create our size user keys. So I'm going to drag this, shrink this window down a little bit and click Save New User Key. And rename this one to small. Now I want to make it a little larger. And save a new user key and rename this one to big. So when I drag my user keys to my layer, you'll see the size attributes apply. To continue, I'll drop in another input and apply some user keys. So now let's look at an example of how to utilize our user keys to quickly program presets. A preset is basically a way to record and recall different looks on one or many destinations quickly. For simplicity, we're going to stick with complete presets today. Info on relative presets can be found in our 4.1 software release video. Okay, so we're going to drag in some of those inputs and apply those user keys real quick. Then we're going to scoot over to our preset tab, click save from preview, rename it, and call this one look one. All right, so well, let's just go ahead and make a new look real quick. I'm going to move these pips around and kind of rearrange them. I'm going to go over to my preset tab and hit save from preview, and then just rename this one look two. 
So I'm going to make a third look, and for this third look, let's say that I want to make this center pip window a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go back over to my user key tab. I'm just going to drag in my little small user key right onto that center pip and butt this one up under it. Then I'm just going to do the same thing I've done with all my others, which is save from preview and rename it. And I'll save this one as look three. Remember, there are several ways to recall presets. You can drag and drop, or you can use the recall buttons, or we can assign them to a console. As you can see, using user keys to create presets can be a powerful tool in your programming arsenal. As with any Event Master product, the S3 Junior provides you with the same versatility and reliability that you've come to expect from Barco. Remember, the last S in BIOS stands for save, so be sure to do it often.